Welcome to AAPC Social Hour for September 14th, 2022. I am making sure that we are online and live. So bear with me as I make sure that all systems are go. All right, so far so good. If you're out there, let me know where you are. Kiana from New York is watching. How, how are things out in New York, Kiana? Let us know how the weather is and how life is going for you out there. I have Karen Bowman with me. Karen, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much, Alex. You're welcome. Where are you at, Karen? I am in Cleveland, Tennessee. Cleveland, Tennessee. And is it cool enough? It is. Yes. Enjoying and, it. <laughs> yes, yes. And we've got Rita. Rita. Hi, everybody. And I was just saying to Rita how um, if you're friends with her on Facebook, you see she's constantly traveling. <laughs> like not just in the U.S., but all over the world. And it's fun. I live vicariously through you, Rita. Uh, I, I appreciate that. You know, you got to keep moving, right? It's what it's all about, making memories. That's right. And thanks so much for being with us today, both of you. Uh, I'm just sharing this to the APC Facebook group right now. Let's see, and then we'll get back into the chats and see who's with us. Okay, all right. We are now in the group and we're gonna see who's, who's joining us. Okay, we've got uh, Patricia um, Cisneros from, from North Carolina. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for joining us today. Ivy Blackwell from Texas. Hi, Ivy. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, where at in Texas are you, Ivy? Let us know. Um, Gail Franks from Virginia. Brenda Wynn from North Carolina as well. Hey, Brenda, do you do you know Patricia, who's also from North Carolina? Um, let, let us know. Patricia, where are you at in North Carolina? Brenda, where are you at? Uh, Cheryl from Oregon. Hey, Rita and Karen, we've got a lot of new faces in here. Today. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, it's exciting. Um, we've got Linda from Lakeland, Florida. Hello. Uh, Amy from Iowa. Kiana says it's a beautiful day out in New York. So, in uh, as you guys know, I'm in the suburbs of Salt Lake, and um, we had a heat wave last week, but it's been raining the last few days, and you feel um, fall is trying to make its way, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. Mm hmm. How about in uh, PA, Rita, in Pennsylvania? So it's about 75 degrees here, so it's still warm. Um, I am a fall person as well, so I cannot wait to welcome in those beautiful colored leaves on the trees. Uh, so we're, we got to go down a little bit more. You know, I'm, still, I'm still wearing short sleeves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Karen, you mentioned that out in Tennessee, it's, it's feeling pretty nice out there. It is. I love this weather for football games. My grandson doesn't play football. He's in the band, but I love to go watch in March. So, yeah. I am, Karen, you brought up band. I was a band kid and I, I still claim that through and through. And I, I still occasionally gig, but I love um, marching percussion. That's kind of my thing. Yeah. So I, I'm totally into that. Love it. But awesome. none of my kids took that route. So that's just how <laughs> the universe works sometimes, right? I was in the band. I right. tore on the tall flag. That was it. I didn't play musical instruments. Awesome. So. Awesome. And the color guard, huh? Yes. And he's marching on the same field that I did. So it's really sentimental That's to me. All you right. Know? That's cool. I love it. Um, let's see here. We've got, uh, oh, Stephanie's watching the barge. Hey, Steph. Hey, Steph. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got Judy from New Jersey. We have so many uh, people watching today. It's um, I think it has to do partly because of free AAPC. And we have some contests um, that we, we need to announce some winners for today. So we've got so much to do. Uh, in fact, let's let's do this. Um, we have Renee on the publishing team coming in. And we, there, we want to talk about a few of the articles in the September issue of HBM. We also want to talk about online exams. We talked about that before we went live. And um, let's see here. 
I think Kiana mentioned something about that. Let's see, where are you? She mentioned, um, here she goes. She says, excited about the online CPB exam for my students. Uh, tons of excitement for online exams. If, if you're in the Facebook group or watching comments online, uh, you can see there's a lot of um, enthusiasm for that. A lot of people transferring. We've had hundreds of people transfer um, from their in-person exam to online exams. Uh, we will go in depth more about that, you guys. And then I know uh, we want to talk about workplace and I guess online probably professionalism. Um, that's a very important topic, something that we all um, could use a refresher on. But um, to start, let's see, I'm just going to go through just a couple more comments. Okay. Uh oh. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I need to disengage my Bluetooth from my phone. All right, there we go. So we're in a giveaway right now. We're gonna talk about our winner for the HealthCon um, registration and rooms. Uh, so we're doing, we as a grand prize for the Facebook contest where um, you share um, why you want to attend HealthCon in Nashville next May. I'll yes. be there. Rita, you'll be there. Karen, yep. I believe you'll be there. Okay. And that's not far from you, Karen. So no, it's not. <laughs> All right. One well, of my favorite cities, Alex. Is it, I've never been there. I'm excited. Oh, you got to hook up with me. I'll take you around. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hey, and also, in addition to the contest that we've um, had that we um, that we have uh, put in the group and are announcing winners for today, we have we will be giving away two um, two pairs of tickets for an Opryland tour. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yes. So hang tight. Um, okay, our big contest winner. Uh, I'm just going to say this. We've had, we had so many amazing entries and um, the team here at APC, we're all, we all, we want everybody to win, but that's impossible. And okay. that, it kind of, I know for me, it kind of breaks my heart that everybody can't win. But that's how contests work, right? So we just we we we've made a choice, and we have selected Bev Stover as our winner for HealthCon. So Bev, congratulations! Congratulations! So Bev wrote a song, and she had a, I, I believe she had a cowboy hat on. She she looked at the part. She looked like she's ready to gig in Nashville. You guys. <laughs> So it's um, and she's not. Uh, let's say she she's not a, a expert guitar player, but she was very brave. Wrote some um, some fun words to go along with her desire to be at HealthCon. And Bev, I'll reach out to you, and we will um, work out those arrangements for you and get to meet you in Nashville in May. So we've got eight APC jackets to give away. We're going to do that after we get Renee on, but um, I have one of the jackets right here. Let's see. I'm going to put it on for you. I'm wearing a PC. I like that. Yeah. Wow, Let's nice. see. I had, to, I had to pull this out because I haven't had a need for this jacket, but I just got the APC logo right here. Oh, I and, love it. Yeah, it's very nice. But what we have, um, we have five of those that we'll be announcing winners for after we talk to Renee. Let me get Renee in here real quick. Okay. All right. Healthcare Business Monthly. If you're watching, let us know in the comments what your favorite article is for September. We want to hear um, what's caught your eye and and what's most interesting to you. There were a few for me, and uh, we'll we'll get to that as soon as Renee's fully connected. Uh oh, she disappeared. <laughs> okay, hold on. She'll she'll be back. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna kick this off without Renee. Hey, you guys. So the two articles that jumped out. Um, to me, were one, um, ICD-10 updates for 2023. Mm -hmm. 
And um, Rita and Karen, anything jump out to you about those updates? I don't know if you guys are in those a lot. Yeah, yeah so I'm not. Time to look at it. I'll be honest. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Hello. Sorry about that. That's all right. We're. I just asked them about if if they have any opinions or thoughts or have heard any buzz about the I ten updates for twenty twenty three. For me, it's an exciting time. You know, I feel like it's Christmas when we start to do all this stuff and all these updates happen. And you know, especially in our in our areas. I mean, last year oncology got hit with a lot of great stuff. So um, I'm always looking to see what to teach my team. And and I think there's a lot of updates that are coming that are are, are for the good, for the better. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I have an article in, in the September issue that kind of glosses over all the updates and hopefully we'll have um more specific articles um written by all you wonderful coders out there. <laughs> well, I know well, it's it's webinar and workshop season for our code updates. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have a few um, on the calendar coming up very soon. Yeah, actually, I have, I have that listed. Actually, where was that? Yeah, I do. I, I know the CPT is in November. Okay. Oh, I don't know where I. Oh, here it is. They probably timed out. But um, yeah, now's a good time to be catching all those webinars with all the yeah. updates for sure. Mm -hmm. It's um an easy way to get plugged into all of the, the nitty gritty of what's happening with those updates. And I, I love, um, Renee, you mentioned how your article is kind of a broad overview, but if you checked out that article, it might give you an idea if you should take the deep dive with our webinars. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. And that that's the goal, really, because um, there are specific, um, here, let me look and see. Joyt uh, or Joy T. Grover. I hope I don't think I said that name right, so forgive me. But she mentions top ten DRGs, mm -hmm. and is is that something that's um, new for I uh, twenty three or I don't know? Um, any thoughts about that, Karen or Rita? No. That was an article. That was an article in, oh. in the September issue as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's when that cut her eye. That's always interesting for me. I'm not an inpatient coder, but you know, with oncology, I deal, you know, work really closely with that team. So it's always interesting to me to look at what encompasses the DRGs and why they are the top DRGs. Um I don't, you know, I don't know if Karen has a chance, you know, to look at that too, but um we uh, that's part of our weekly report out is the DRGs and what's going on with our patients on the inpatient side. Okay. Uh, well, we're all outpatient here. So like you, Ray, I don't really look at those DRGs, but it is interesting when you do have time to read that because it's a whole different world. So. All right. Um, Gail Franks mentioned she liked the article, Your EM Questions Answered. EM, oh, okay. right. That's just uh, uh, always a hot topic and where we can um, learn more and uh, unravel um, the mysteries of evaluation and management. Um Judy um, Pantaleon says she's waiting on her new books. And this is that time of day. It is a busy time with yeah. so much happening. But yes, books, um, I believe, um, will start shipping this month is typically when that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so you might see your ICD-10 um, book uh, coming in the in the coming weeks or, or within the month, I'd imagine, and then CPT later in the year. So, yeah. It's Christmas. That's what I said. I yeah. love my books. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the smell of the books. You know, the new books. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, you just rip that plastic yes. wrapping off of it and smell it. And then you, and then you, <laughs> after you get all of that wrapping off, then you have the, um, uh, someone at, at a the snow. Yes, the yeah. snow. There you go. Someone called a book of dandruff before. Um, <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be. Is it, it's pretty good now. Yeah, it's you kind just of like don't wear have, black when you open it. <laughs> they have a thing now, though. You know how, like, when you get a, a, a Christmas tree and you can get it shake, uh, you know, shaken so that it doesn't have the bugs in it. And 
Uh, do you guys know about that? No. You, you shake it out to get the like, What out? are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know about flocked when they flock a tree, but I don't know. Exactly. Hey, we, well, we there's a, a vibrating thing when you, you go get a cut, a fresh cut tree, they can put it through this vibrating machine and it kind of shakes all those spiders out and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they have the same kind of thing for the books too. They they have like a machine that can kind of vibrate, you know, and get all those those snow parts out. So it, it's gotten a lot better. It's not, not good. <laughs> hey guys, we need to make a snow globe that just has a code book in there. Oh and yeah. Shake it and That's it all... perfect. <laughs> Oh, that'd be fun. Well, so, I was going to say, as far as the ICD-10, um, in the article, you'll notice that uh, chapter five, mental, behavioral, and neurodevelopmental disorders, that's, that's a big one to notice. There's a lot of uh, new codes, code changes that are uh, going on in that chapter. Okay. Another article Renee pointed out to me was the article on page 48, take your coding to the next level with AI. That jumped out to me because I, when I hear AI, I hear it in fear from others that it's going to take their jobs. But this article um, really talks about how it, it helps coders be better coders. And there, I, I don't think it's ever going to remove you from your job. If you're a good coder, great work ethic, work ethic, willing to learn, um, there's always going to be a place for you. But here's what um, Jacob from the NAB said. He says, the intent of these AI programs is to reduce the complexity of complex coding scenarios for the coder or to assist them in being more efficient or to help the coder focus on things that cannot be done by the computer. I love that. It really yeah. takes the fear out of that and sees how it, it can be complimentary. Rita, do you have thoughts? Yeah, so I'm going to go back to when our EMR started to, you know, be implemented all over the place and everybody had the mandate to do that. And a lot of the coders started to fear that they wouldn't have a job because the medical record, you know, was coming through electronically and they're putting these things in place like work cues and, and, and all kinds of stuff. But I used to tell everybody that I spoke to at chapters or in my classes when I was teaching I-10 that you're going to be needed more than anything because we're the ones that are creating those logics. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, a lot of people went to go work for EMR systems and a lot of people that work in academic settings like myself, coders are needed more than ever. I mean, yeah, a physician may choose a code and it might flow through, but you still have to look at it before it goes out the door to make sure it's correct. So I think that AI, you know, we're in a time that AI is essential and required for a lot of things that we do. Um, so I always say, don't be afraid. I, I know people hate change because I always say people don't go to work and say, I can't wait for change to happen because that never does. Uh, but it's about accepting and knowing the why. And the why is, is that this is going to make you work smarter, not harder. Yes, I love it. Karen, thoughts? I agree with Rita on that. And I think that, you know, we are all are a little bit nervous about something new when it comes along. But with that, I think it just complements what we do as coders. And even helps us to be better coders, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because we have the tools necessary to use to do our job. Awesome. I love it. Hey, we've got a lot of fun comments that came through about new code books. So John <laughs> says it's a celebration <laughs> moment. So it's like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Linda says she opens her books outside. That's not a bad idea. Um, Holly says, uh, she says, the fun of marking up my new books. Now, is that a hassle, you guys, or is that um, something you look forward to and maybe reacquaint yourselves with the sections that you work in? Oh, well, for okay, okay. <laughs> it's not a hassle. It's You kind of enjoy it. You know, to be the first person to mark in that book <laughs> and know what's your, your information for you in there. Yes. Um, it's so funny for me because I don't tab. <laughs> Nor, nor do I put a lot of stuff in my book because I'm just, now we're going to yesteryear, right? So when I started coding, none of us were able to do that when we took our exams. So I only put certain things in there. So it's really funny that, you know, most people do a lot of work in their books, whereas I just automatically know where to go and, and kind of focus on that area. But yeah, a lot of people have different ways of handling those books. 
Okay. I had only tabbed one time and that was a lot of work and I chose <laughs> not to do it again. But I do like to make my little notes on my particular codes that I use. So, yeah. Okay. So our friend, Samantha Patterson uh, on the NAB, she says she uses a blow dryer on her books. Can you imagine <laughs> the first time her husband saw her, her kid saw her do that? <laughs> <laughs> now this comment is for Renee. This comes from John. He says, "Our books have spiders." <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna need that spider shaking machine to get. get him out. <laughs> well, maybe if you haven't cracked it open in a while. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, um, our friend Caitlin Brock says um, she started saving her books, her old books, for Christmas tree decor. So that's a great idea. You could. I guess make star, um, snowflakes and all kinds of things. That, that's always a hot topic. What do I do with my old code yeah. books? And I know many of you keep a, a, a long history of them because you need them, Rita. Do you? I have a lot of books. I don't like, and I like to refurbish them. So like if, if someone doesn't know how to look something up or you know what needs to become familiar with something, I use those books to teach too. Um, or if somebody can't afford books right now, I say, okay, use these now, but we need the new ones just to kind of get familiar with what it looks like. But, you know, there were several people who used to make the Christmas wreaths out of the I-10 books and I-C-9 books back in the day. So a lot of people have become very creative with these books. You know, that's a thought because people are making angels out of books, but I don't know if they could do it out of these books, but that's a really good thought. I did kind of like you did, Rita, as, as I was an adjunct faculty member. And so it was very costly for those students to buy those CPT and ICB-10 books. So if I had some a year old or even two years old, we would do that in their classes so they wouldn't have to buy them. But because it was the same, we were just teaching them how to code, needless to say. Whether the code The big thing is when you're practicing exams, most people don't show up with a Hicks Picks book. Right. So I tend to like put them in a section so when I proctor, even though they might not be the current year, it's better than having nothing, you know? So I always keep them on the side. Yeah. Absolutely. Great idea. Well, Karen Hale says, I love all books, so I keep all my old codes <laughs> <laughs> so, or all my old code books. So I love that. So I, it sounds like Karen is a big reader, probably, with quite the library. So, well, there's so much going on in um, Healthcare Business Monthly, so many great articles, and we've just touched on a few, and it's fun seeing everybody else's favorite articles or the ones that jumped out to them. Um, and there are a few comments um, in here. Christy Pryor mentions the depression article that caught her attention. Um, but uh, Renee, how about you? What, what, what was your favorite? As someone who is completely immersed in every page of Healthcare <laughs> Business Monthly, what was your favorite article this past month? Um, I liked Sherry Bernard and Kushwinder Singh's article on capture the complete clinical picture with precision. And um, I don't know if that's what that one person was referring to because it does touch on the um, depression coding. Um, I found her, their article to be really uh, interesting because um, it kind of touches on, it kind of affects everybody, really. Um, you know, I mean, there's the, the coders, um, you know, with the diagnoses, it's the, the providers with the documentation, it's the payers, um, you know, who are um, now, you know, under scrutiny for um, risk adjustment codes. And, you know, it's like, it kind of trickles down to, you know, who's who's to blame. And so, you know, everybody's kind of under scrutiny right now, but most importantly is the patient themselves, you know, they're the ones that are gonna get the uh, backlash the most because if the diagnosis code is wrong, you know, what's gonna happen to them? Somebody is misdiagnosed as, uh, you know, has major depressive disorder. And, and they don't, you know, I mean, are they not gonna um, be able to do something that they had wanted to do because of that or something? Um, it's just, it's just such a, a vast topic that, and I think it's it's a big topic right now that everybody's talking about. So, and and they, they talked about it very um, 
thoroughly and eloquently, I think. So that was one of my favorite articles. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Renee. Renee, how is how have submissions been from members for articles for Healthcare Business Monthly? Is, is, do you guys need members submitting more? No, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I we, you know, I mean, I would say about a third of the content is from members, and and that's a perk for members to be able to become published, and you know, it's a, a feather in their cap, you know, as far as. Uh, Putting something like that on the resume, and it, you know, this this AAPC, you know, this, this membership is all about um, sharing information and networking and working together, and um, you know, it makes us all stronger and smarter. Um, there's no reason to, you know, keep it to yourself. So, yes, by all means, please, if you have something to share, you're willing, you're more than welcome to share it with us. We have. Uh, we always need, you know, tips and tricks for how to code a specific scenario, um, auditing best practices, practice management tips, you know, compliance uh, guidance. Um, we even have a coder's voice column. Um, if you just have something to say and you want to, you know, get it off your chest. I mean, we've had a lot of really good articles based on, you um, uh, you know, things that people are dealing with, like, you know, being a coder during COVID and, or, you know, anything like that. So, um, yeah, we're always looking for topics and Alex can put the link in there, and let you know how to submit them. It's in there. So if you'd like to write for eight, if for HPM, even if you have had that thought, but maybe you're nervous to take that step forward. Maybe you're you don't feel confident about your writing. I recommend just submitting at the link that I posted and just sharing your idea. And Renee and the team can help give you direction and flush it out and um, and help you on the right path. Yeah, yeah. We don't. I mean, you may not always be accepted right off the bat. You know, there may be a little back and forth. Um, we definitely work with people, you know, who are not writers, but have a really good concept and that needs to go out. You know, it's like we, we really want this topic, but let's figure out how to, you know, the right way to say it. And so we'll go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, Renee, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, one last thing, too. Don't forget to plug the salary survey. Wow. Do we have a link for that yet? Yeah, hang on a second. Let me see. Um, so our salary survey is completely dependent on the information that you, our members, um, enter into there. So sometimes we receive criticism about it not being com um, completely accurate. Well, we don't cook the books. This is exactly what our members give us, and we just we just dissect that and share the information. So. Um, it, we rely on on your time and and your information just to um, make sure that is up to date. I'm gonna give a plug for that. Um, yeah. for, as a leader, um, data is always your friend when you are trying to present things from a budgetary perspective. So salary surveys are important, especially if you oversee an area and you're able to present the fact that maybe a coder doesn't make as much as what the salary states. So I always say that that's really important to answer those questions and answer them accurately. Um, of course, there's a little difference between the area that you live in and so forth, but it does help. A lot of us live on statistics from MGMA and from the AAPC to push things forward. So answer it, it will help. Right, and the more we have, the more data we have, the more accurate it is, so. Yep. Yeah. And I put that, the link in the chat. I got it and I posted the link in the comments. So and everybody watching, please just take a few minutes uh, sometime this week and um, fill out the salary survey. That would be amazing. Real quick, um, Renee, before I let you go, Lindsay Motter is asking, how long does it take for HBM to publish your article? Mine was accepted in early July and I haven't heard anything since. I think the timelines are pretty 
long. Who was that now? What's your name? I'm Lindsay Motter. Hmm. Oh, that sounds familiar. Um, generally, it takes, well, we work two months ahead. And so and then it usually takes us a few weeks to review article submissions and then and contact somebody. But if you submitted it by in July, we should have. Um, should have seen it by then. Yeah, so I'm just checking our database here. Okay. Lindsay Renee is on the hunt to see what is hap or what has happened with your submission. Um, thanks for letting us know. And we may just have you reach out to us again. Um, maybe yeah. reach out to me in um, reach out to APC Alex on Facebook to send me a direct message, and I'll get your in email and some information, and then I'll pass it on to Renee. Does that work out, Renee? Yeah, I do have it here. So hang on a second. Let me see. Oh, okay. I have actually, I sent you an email in August saying that we accepted it. And it's actually planned for November. Well, there you go. Awesome. Congratulations, Lindsay. You'll be published. Yeah. Thank awesome. you very That's much. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Renee, you have a good one. We appreciate your time. Okay, thanks. You're Bye. welcome. All right, you guys, we're going to give away a few jackets, five jackets. And if um, you're not, if these people are not watching, I will ping them offline. Um, so this contest was for yeah, these. I'll just show it again. Um, these awesome LL Bean. Oh, these are L. Mine says Eddie Bauer. So Eddie Bauer jacket um, with the uh, APC logo, the new logo on there. Uh, perfect timing as we're heading into fall and winter. And um, the, the contest was share your uh, story or pictures from a past health cons and just to kind of share that experience. And we did that in the group. We do a lot of these. We've done a few of these contests in the group because um, that community is so active, so many great people in there, and it's easy to get the inform, uh, information out. But so here are our, our five winners. Donna Lines, L-Y-N-E-S. Donna, you win a jacket. Elizabeth Herbert, um, Louise Sessions, Sabrina Nunley. Um, so Sabrina, what stood out to me about her submission, she posted two, um, two posts, one, um, one from a more recent conference, and then she posted from the Seattle conference, which I think that was before I had been at APC. So do you remember when that was, you guys? There was a regional that we had there. And then the national, I could tell you, was probably when my son was like five. Okay. <laughs> and he's now in college. 21. So there you go. <laughs> uh, and then Patty um, Bassa is our last jacket winner. Uh, and what was fun about this, I mean, not only seeing the places we've been, but yeah. seeing the people that um, that we have connected with, networked with, these people sharing those pictures. And uh, there are pictures of our friend, Rita, we were talking about him, AAPC, Dave or Dave Blackmer, who mm -hmm. uh, he would dress up in the craziest outfits. I saw a few Dave as Elvis pictures. Elvis. And um, for the Disney character. Uh, Gaston. Gaston, yeah. yeah. So the funny thing about that is um, Disney, you know, he, they have tight rules on using their likeness and and those things. I think he named himself Gas Strong. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny, but he's great. We miss Dave and um, uh, Rita recently connected with them and sounds like he's doing well. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, I always talk about conference because there's so much that goes on and so many things that you learn just going to conference from, from my, an education perspective, but the networking and the lifelong friends that you make. And I know I'm lucky because I have been going to conference for a very long time, the length of my son's uh, life and probably a little bit more than that. And I've made wonderful friends all over the United States and I, we're all still connected and it's a networking and that's what we're all about. Okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like the, I feel like the essence of AAPC, that the energy and 
who we are can be found at local chapter meetings and at conferences. Yep. And if you've never been to a PC conference, you're missing out. It's just um, electric, just tons of fun. We have a great time and it's just great to be with your friends. And what what's great now is our communities, our online communities are so big and robust. And I see names um, frequently in like the group or people reaching out to me offline who I get to meet in person. And that that is just a joy for me. I mean, I don't know if you remember, Alex, the one year that we did Where's Alex and everybody had to give a dollar for the hardship fund. Yeah. And we yes. made a lot of money that year because yeah. everybody wanted to see you. <laughs> well, a, a funny thing about that, I, I, and many of you may have um, heard the story before, but when I first started there, the moderation in the group, there, there wasn't, um, it was kind of the Wild West. There's is it was a free for all. And I when I started, I just started this APC Alex thing. Never thought it was anything other than let's just keep peace in the group. And uh, I, I think some members thought that maybe it was Bevan, APC's president, hiding behind this persona. But it's not. I'm real. You guys met me. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to do a couple more prizes. We're, get, we're just going to finish all the prizes up right now. Um, so I mentioned two pairs of tickets to Opryland. Oh, no, sorry, the Grand Old Opry. And I just I just found this out as we've had our discussion so far. Um, uh, there are two more things that we're giving away. So we're also giving two ghost tour uh, ghost tours. And I think that that may be two pairs. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure on that. But and I know we are meeting in May, but how fun. I mean, we're kind of going into Halloween season, but there's so much to see in Nashville. And we we just thought it'd be fun to give those who are attending um, a little um, a little treat um, if if you win. So if you are watching. Um, let me know uh, what are. If you're attending HealthCon, first, let me know, are you signed up for HealthCon? And if you're signed up for HealthCon or will be signed up for HealthCon, what do you look forward to doing in the city? I know nothing or very little about Nashville. What would you like to see? So the, um, the first four people to respond will win these prizes. And I'm watching the chat right now, you guys, and I got my notes here. I just want to tell a funny story. Years ago, I was at a, a conference and we were at the Grand Ole Opry. I was on crutches, but I got to stand in the circle on the stage. It was awesome. It was just awesome. Very nice place. That That's the Grand Ole Opry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Seeing a show there is amazing. Is it really? It is. Yes. All right. Um, Lindsay Motter says the Batman building. Oh, is, yes. Mm -hmm. It's Gotham City. Yes. Oh, Gotham is was filmed in Nashville? The one building, oh. I think, where the they come out, right, Karen, when they come out? Well, the building looks like Batman. It, it is. It's really the new little thing. Looks like the Batman, um, the head. It looks like it. It's really pretty cool. Like the ears. Okay. Yes. Okay. I need to check That's that out. That's what it looks like. Yes. Okay, so we've got Lindsay Motter. Um, you get you get an Opry, a pair of Opry tickets for the tour. Um, Carlita looks like she's going. She says, "I'm looking forward to eating," and I confess that's kind of what I always look forward to. Jack's well. Barbecue on the Strip <laughs> and the Loveless Cafe. Awesome. Um, Carlita, you also get um, two tickets to tour the Grand Ole Opry. And let's see here. Um, I so we've got some NAB members who have responded, and I'm going to um, exclude them from that. Um, and it's not because I don't love you; it's because like a friends, family, employees thing, or whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see here, Deborah. Uh, Deborah Alex says seeing a live band, which they call it Music City for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Deborah, I have two two ghost tour tickets for you. 
Uh, I just wrote your name down. I will hunt you down and make sure we can um, get you get you those tickets. And then um, Lady Martinez, yes. she says visit country theaters. And tell me about that. Like I guess there's it's someone told me it's like um, the Las Vegas trip, but just with music bars and venues all along. Is that right, Rita? Well, there's yeah, there's a lot of um places along the Conky Tonk Row, I call it, where a lot of people were discovered over the years and there's great bands that play there. Um, there's Ernest Tubbs Record Shop where Loretta Lynn was discovered and there's all these cool albums there. And there's just one thing after another when it comes to music, the Ryman or Auditorium, which is their original Grand Old Opry nice. is phenomenal to see as well. So it's just, if you love music and it's just a place to be. I mean, I'm not a you know gigantic country fan, but there's a lot of country music that, cross over though most people don't realize what's considered country so there's a lot of great stuff to listen to and you never know who you might be seeing walking down that street people are known to pop up <laughs> okay all right all right well uh, karen this is kind of your neck of the woods do you spend much time out in nashville um not that often because it's about three hours from me okay. but i do go and it is a wonderful city there's nothing like it it's just wonderful what are I'm your favorite things? <laughs> um, I've gone to the concerts there at the stadium, and it's just, you know, it's just really neat. Um, I've seen Garth. He's my favorite. You know, he's my husband one day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I do love Garth Brooks. <laughs> you know, Trish is okay. But anyway, no, that's my favorite singer, and I've seen him many a time. But I've been to Robin Auditorium for several concerts, and uh it's just the neatest city. I'm just mm -hmm. going to tell you, it's, it has a life of its own. It yeah. really does. The people are so nice as well, like just amazing. And it's got a little bit of history, you know, even in market history, because there's a hermitage where, you know, is Andrew Jackson's house. So there's a lot of, there's something for everyone there, really. And right. the Country Music Hall of Fame is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And we we had searched high and low for different um, tours and things for our members to see for giveaways. Um, we will have more. We so guys, free APC today kind of ends the first round of giveaways for that. But we've got, and I know many members are excited about the the next phase of free <laughs> APC this month. I have seen uh, many comments and many people eager waiting to see what's going to happen. But we have amazing contests related to that. Uh, some will be on Instagram, or at least one will be on Instagram. So if you're not following AAPC on Instagram, get over there now and just search for AAPC official. Um, and then I think there'll be another in the group and then we'll do more in the next social hour later this month. All right. Um, real quick. Because I know we are call we, we're having too much fun, and we yeah. could we could talk and hang out for two hours. And I know you guys have a topic, but can we just talk about online exams real quick? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we made the announcement um, earlier this week that all AAPC all AAPC exams in the U.S. Uh, will now be available uh, beginning immediately uh, available electronically so you could take them from the comfort of your own home there are um, there are parameters to doing that and requirements um, with your webcam and the layout of the, of the room I don't know all of those but if you are planning on taking your online exam you should um, be aware of those things and look them up they should be in the email and information that you get as you register um, but we are very excited for that. And as I can see, I'm reading um, comments. There are those excited about that in the comments. Um, and many members making that switch from online or from in-person to online. Um, Rita and Karen and I spoke about this before we went live, but um, we, we realized that exams are an important part of AAPC chapters. And um, there will they receive a lot of they receive funding to survive and to do all of the great things they do for you um, by hosting exams. There will be other um, ways that we take care of this going forward. Um, and Marty from our chapters team and Ray and the APC staff will keep you plugged into that as that unfolds. But um, 
in-person exams will continue through 2023. So if you prefer online or in-person exams, you get in there now, between now and next year, through next year. Um, Christy Pryor asks, are they giving extra time or the same time? It's this, I believe it's the same time. I don't think those things change. It's the same number of questions, all of that. Uh, Karen, yes. it's a lot. I mean, I mean, do you have a thoughts, feelings about this, um, this transition for AAPC? I think it's going to be great. I think it's what we need as far as for our members. I do know that some chapters have struggled to get people to proctor those exams because it is usually on the weekend in some of the chapters. And, and some people don't like giving up half a day of their, their weekend time. But I do know because of the conference call we were on the, just Monday night, I believe it was, there are ways, just like you said, AAPC is looking at ways to help those local chapters since you know, you're going to have less people taking the exam in person. But I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's where we're headed now. And honestly, I think, I hate to say it, but I think you go back to COVID. We learned then that we can work from home and different things like that. So I think as long as people meet the parameters that are set up, um, legitimately so, because we need to protect the integrity of those exams, I think that that's, that is going to be a great thing for us. Rita, thoughts on your end? Yeah, I think as long as, you know, we we are able to come up with ideas for local chapters, I think that this is really the venue anymore because, you know, we are going into, we just talked about AI and we talked about all of the you know, things that we progressed upon regarding, um, you know, all of the great things like an EMR, telehealth, you know, Zoom meetings. Um, so it is it is the wave of the future. Um, just, you know, local chapters are the core of everything, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to give them some great ideas to move forward with as well. Yes. Chapters are critical, <coughs> excuse me, critical to APC, and we want to do everything we can to help you, our chapter officers, thrive in your chapters. So, uh, so just fear not. We've got things up our sleeves to, to keep you humming. Um, Let's see. We have, oh, Emily Williams asks, how do you become a proctor? Emily, that is run through your AAPC local chapter. So if you'd like to proctor, which they would love, they would absolutely love it, I'm sure. Um, and it's a great experience to connect with these um, future coders. You're helping them pave their path. Uh, but reach out to your local chapter, um, let them know, uh, or well, I guess you'd find out when their um, exams are and they could help plug you into a proctoring opportunity. So, all right. Awesome. Professionalism. <laughs> guys, well, we, we are jumping all over the place, <laughs> but we have, so there's just so much to cover. Now, um, regarding professionalism, I'm reading Karen, I see it from a digital point of view. Right. As far as online, and we always talk about um, uh, representing yourself um, well in the group and other online places that you are a brand and how do you want to represent yourself. But it goes beyond that to your office and potential employers. Rita, what do you have to say about for your identity? Uh, you're right. Creating who you are is so important within the workplace, right? Um, um, I be I am very um, supportive, and I believe that you know your actions speak so much louder than words. And the way you interact with people is critical, right? It's about the recognition of staff. It's about the thank yous. It's about the good mornings. Um, it's about helping people that are lost in the system that maybe they're not even your patients. Um, but it's really about the trust factor. It's about you know, the, the fairness in a professional standpoint. Um, from a leader's perspective, it's about growing your entire team, not just a portion of your team. Uh, you know, when it comes to professionalism, I, you know, I talk about this uh, frequently is what I call diner lingo. Um, so a lot of us kind of get caught up in maybe your neighborhood lingo or how, you know, you might say something that would normally be between friends and you don't really realize it, that you're saying it in a, in your office or your, you know, your hospital or whatever. And it gets taken a different way because it's really not 
a professional way to say something. Um, you know, hi, hon is a big thing for my neighborhood, right? Hi, hon, but you what you can't say that at work. It's not, it's not appropriate. So just some of those little things that you just need to remember when you're saying something is just like, let me make sure I'm saying the correct thing and that, you know, it's coming out the right way. Um, the other piece of this is email. We use email in a lot of ways that is not correct. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like you put maybe uh, emojis in there, images, and you're like communicating on a professional standpoint with all of these things that are in an email that are incorrect and you shouldn't be doing that. So, and, and the response, like, so if your email, email, you know, is your policy that you need to respond within 24 hours or the same day, make sure you follow that. Um, they're like the two key pieces that I remind my staff about. Um, and the other piece is LinkedIn. That's a social media network that's for professionalism and for business. So you need to make sure that what you're putting out there is correct, is up to date, um, and that it is in a professional manner, that you're not offensive, that you're not using political you know, views or, or religious views because it is a business network. And the biggest thing I could tell somebody is don't say something negative about your job because you're on LinkedIn and someone will see that. And many corporations have social media policies and that somebody's not gonna interview you or not even gonna come towards you for a job if they see negativity. So just remember that it's, it's easier to be positive than negative. Karen, thoughts on your end? I agree. One of the biggest things that I see, and I've been in administrator for about 30 years, probably longer than some of you have been on the earth, but <laughs> we'll start talking about interviewing. When you, when you interview with someone, watch what you wear. This is a professional. We're professional. Don't wear jeans, sweats, or anything like that. Um, don't be on your cell phone when you come in the door because that we look at that because we assume you'll be that way when we're when you're at work you just need to be professional you know again watch what you say um and we do we do have have people that are from different areas that what they say in one area whether they live there or not that's that was comfortable but but you know when we're in the medical field uh, it, to me it's a professionalism if you wear scrubs, you can wear scrubs to an interview. I have no problem with that. If you can, if you don't have dress clothes, borrow something. You know, you go to the Goodwill, pick up some dress slacks, you know, those kind of things, because that says more about you because you do care. Um, be at your best. Um, be on time for the interview. And I've had a lot of people in the last two years, it's been worse, and I don't know the reason for that, but who didn't show for their interviews. Yeah. And when you don't show for an interview and you don't call me, you probably will not get a second interview with me because I booked time for you. So just be that professionalism, hold that, you know, realize that we're going to look at that and be truthful. Be truthful on your resumes because we will check that out. Again, this is a professional resume that you have created. And, you know, just, just make sure that this is what you want to do and we're, if you have the skills that we need, we're going to help you along the way. But it, and it comes into play and if when you're, if you're in school, you know, if, for if you're in college or whatever, you're taking a course, it's that professionalism that you have that comes across, whether you're going to be a medical assistant, a coder, an insurance dealer, it all comes into play in the medical field because our patients need somebody that's professional with them, you know, and, and that's, that's the key thing. I always tell my staff, treat people as you want to be treated and you should never have a problem. Um, I, don't, I tell them not to call them by their first name, call them by Mr. Smith or whoever. And that, that's given them the courtesy that they deserve because they've chosen to come to us. But that's what I'm going to talk about. It's just that interview process and you walk into the office, you know, or in your, wherever it may be. Now, if you're working from home, wear what you want. You know, I don't care what you're in, but if you're in my office, we have a dress down day and it needs to be appropriate. And I've sent people home before because they didn't follow the policy. Yeah. And so we still want to have that image to our patients. And, and like Frida said with the LinkedIn and everything, you know, we, are, we should hold our, ourselves up high to the standards that we kind of hold ourselves in the office, even if we're not in an office setting or at work because we want to be that professional person, or I do at least, mm -hmm. and I hope my staff does, so. The one thing with Karen with, um, with interviewing too is that know, know where you're interviewing. So if you're applying to a 
a hospital or an office, or know about it. No, you know, they're going to ask you, why do you want to work here? Right. So know, know like the, the history of the place. So that always helps as well. Yeah. And the one thing I wouldn't ask on the very first question is how much does it pay? <laughs> you know, because then we're going to think you're only concerned about the money. So, I mean, we go by salary service like we were talking earlier. It is so important in my job that we have accurate salary surveys because that's what I pay my staff off of. So, yeah. So just. You know, we're going to pay you appropriately for the most part. Tom Gooch says, apply the newspaper front page test. And that is, don't say anything that you wouldn't want printed on the front page of a newspaper. Absolutely. That's, that's good. And <laughs> yeah. just thinking about dress. And I feel like um, there's a generation coming up that um, maybe go to interviews more casually with yes. as far as attire. And, it's, mm -hmm. and um, I think... I think the best policy is to overdress mm -hmm. and see what it's like before you decide to go a little more casual. I, you will never lose if you are overdressed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, we, we've talked about, um, you know, the cost of the, that. And um, I would recommend this, like, because we've talked about Goodwill and mm -hmm. Salvation Army, things like that. But if you are serious about this career and your passion and desire it shows through, when you go to your chapter meetings, I am sure if you had a private um, conversation with a chapter officer and said, hey, I just can't afford nicer clothes mm -hmm. right now or whatever, I would bet that they would yes. bend over backwards to make something happen. Absolutely. 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 And if you have a mentor, I absolutely would think that they would help as well. Like somebody that you, um, that's helping you grow in your career as well. I mean, it's, it's, you want people to be successful. You, you do. And one of the things I tell people, like if my staff has to buy scrubs, we give them so much money per year for scrubs, but buy a couple of pair of pants and different tops, buy some khakis, some black pants or skirt or whatever, and just use different tops with them until you can afford to get those clothing. Because if you're not in this field, then you most likely don't have dress clothes laying around. I've worn dress clothes for 30 years, so I have lots of dress clothes, but not everybody does. So you're right. Everything that you said, you know, go to your chapter officers, the mentors. We are wanting to help these people succeed. We really do. And I think this is what we're here for. You know, I would rather give to somebody than to receive myself. And I just want to be able to help them to be a mentor to them and help them be able to, to achieve their goals, mm -hmm. you know, and get the job that they want. Hey, we have our mentorship program. So if you Google AAPC mentorship program, you're going to land on there and it's a free service to all AAPC members and we'll connect you with a professional that will help you get you where you need to be. Um, We've got two great comments too that I want to hit. Christy Pryor says, some chapters do a dress for success. Everyone donates clothes. What a great idea. That's an awesome That's idea. awesome. Uh, and then Kimberly Mills says, some chapters have some extra money to help with um, such situations. So I think that's that's a lot, there are a lot of great things happening. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yes. All right. Hey, guys, we've got one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> Rita, do you have anything in closing about um, about professionalism that you'd like to cover that we may not have time for? Um, I I always just tell anyone that I interact with that we're here to help, right? Any one of us is is here to help you grow. I always say I'm not going to be doing this at 100 years old. Uh, so take all my knowledge, take you know any advice I have that is going to help you grow, and and just take it and run with it. Um, it is, I, I get very excited when I see some of my staff members that have worked with me for many years and have gone on and succeeded in other roles and moved up the ladder. I mean, it's just wonderful to see that. And it makes me, you know, ecstatic. And knowing that I had just maybe a little, little, little piece to do with that. And we're all here to help. So if you have a chapter officer, a board member, reaching out to APC, whatever we can do to help, if you have a question, like, should I do this or shouldn't I do that? Feel free to reach out because we're all here for you. Yes. Karen, any final thoughts from you? I agree with what Rita said. And I think that, <clears throat> you know, we are so proud that you are a part of the APC. And I think that you will find 
it, there's some tough times trying to find jobs sometimes, but I think what you will find with us is we're trying to help you get your success, whether it's dressing for the part um, and just helping with questions, you know, that you may have. Because trust me, we all started in this field and we had to help have help along the way too. Yeah. So I appreciate the, the big the big piece is feedback is a gift. So if somebody's telling you something, please don't take it personal. They want you to be successful and just yeah. take it and grow with it. Yes, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, we have a few great comments that I want to hit. Pinky says this. I love your name, by the way, Pinky. <laughs> this live makes me feel like I'm getting that talk. It's a step. Oh. It's a step of an open door for the newbies. Be prepared and ready. I love it. Yes. Thank you for the comment, Pinky. Susan um, Swinski says the APC Mentor City program is great. Sign up and complete your full profile so you can have a better chance to be matched with someone who can help you. Hey, this is what we're all about, just helping us get to where we uh, hope to be professionally, to be our best selves for each other so we can lift each other, but also uh, so we can be the best healthcare professionals that we can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, everybody, um, thank you so much for being with us today. Rita and Karen, hang on as we wrap this up. A uh, few things as a few closing comments. So we've got, we have a Q&A for online exams next week. Um, you can find that on our Facebook page. So if you search for the AAPC Facebook page, scroll down and there's a, a meeting invite where you can Mark yourself um, for that and get a reminder about that. Um, and then free AAPC continues, as mentioned, through the end of the month. So um, next week, we kick off round two. I know many of you are eager and excited about that. We are too. I can't wait. It's hard for me to keep my lips sealed. <laughs> I see comments on the Facebook group about people guessing what's going to happen. And I'm like, no, that's not happening. Or yes. And I just gotta, it's a good thing that, um, you know, I just have to show restraint, you guys. And then the contests keep going. This is the, the, I think the best free APC we've had because we are giving away so many amazing prizes. Uh, we've just begun. We have more amazing contests coming up. So stay tuned. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Uh, we hope you have a great day and we will see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.